Do you have a problem sticking to your diet? If so, then this is the video that you want to see. All right, hi everybody, John Meadows here, and today I want to talk about uh, sticking to your diet. It's uh, December here, we just had Thanksgiving, we've had plenty of cookies, and my boys just had their birthday, so we've had plenty of cake and cookies and pie. So a lot of you, um, probably like me, have issues sticking with your diet. So what I want to do today is I want to talk about three things that I think are, are really important, that I really think can help you in your, your journey. And number one is going to be something very simple. It's going to be to just establish a goal. When you say you want to stick to your diet, well, why do you want to stick to your diet? Do you want to lose 10 pounds? Do you want to lose 20 pounds? Do you want to get stronger? Um, maybe your diet means you need to gain weight. Maybe you want to gain weight, but why is it exactly that you need to adhere to a particular type of food plan? Um, I wouldn't even call it a diet. I would just call it your, your meal plan. That's what I call it, people. It's their meal plan. So how do you stick to your meal plan? And I find that if you have something very black and white and concrete, it can really help, it can really help you. So for me, I know, for example, when I compete, for fear of embarrassing myself on stage and my, my family and friends, that's a very good motivator for me. Um, so I'm going to stick to my diet. Now, if I don't have any competitions lined up, then, hey, that extra piece of pie, that's okay. I don't really have any contests coming up. Or, you know what, I'll start tomorrow. Or, man, I messed up my lunch, so forget the rest of the day. I'll just eat whatever, and I'll start over tomorrow. All those things happen, and I'm sure everybody, I'm sure you can relate to that. But if you have a goal that's very clear that you, so that's number one, and then beyond that, then you have to kind of work toward it. How do you do that? Is it taking pictures every week of yourself? Is it um, getting your body fat measured? Is it looking at the, uh, maybe it's getting your body fat measured, or maybe it's getting your strength measured. Maybe you want to get bigger and stronger, so maybe you test your strength every month. My point is, is that you have a goal, but then you have to have, you have to have checkpoints along the way to, to ensure that you're moving toward that goal. If you don't really have any checkpoints and it's kind of this nebulous thing, hey, I'm just trying to lose 30 pounds uh, whenever, well, when? In, in a month, in a year, in two years? But if you break it down into really clear pieces, you know, I want to lose 30 pounds over the course of six months then you can kind of tell if you're on track. Well, okay, so 30 pounds over six months, you know, that'd be 15 pounds at three months. So maybe, you know, five pounds a month. So maybe you try to lose five pounds a month, for, for example. And you can really see how you're doing. Um, but you need ways to measure. So maybe you need to get a coach to help you be accountable, uh, to do weekly check-ins with. Maybe you don't need a coach. Maybe you just need to establish those same things yourself. Weekly measure of body fat. What I do with body fat is I have people measure their two fattest areas. These are for people trying to lose weight, lose body fat. And I find that when your two fattest areas are going the right way, then you're always going, then you're fine. You know, a lot of people do a, like a nine-fold test, which is great if you're just trying to determine your overall body fat. But there's some body parts like my arms and my legs have no body fat. So measuring them tells me nothing about if I'm getting lean or not. But if you look at my subscap or my kidneys, yeah, you're going to get some fat. And if those are coming down, I know I'm heading in the right direction. So keep it simple. I like to, again, measure two things um, and then just make sure those two things are coming down if I'm trying to lose fat. If I'm trying to gain muscle, um, muscle gain doesn't happen real quickly. So now you've got a little bit different. Well, you're probably going to want to measure... Um, you're probably going to want to do underwater or you could do a DEXA scan or you could, you could still do body, you could still do skin folds and then do your overall how many pounds of fat do you have versus how many pounds of muscle. But again, you need to make sure you're headed in the right direction. So uh, I just want to summarize this point by saying have a clear goal and then have ways to measure and keep yourself on track and accountable to reach those goals. That is absolutely number one in my book. Number two would be discipline. Everybody starts out very motivated. And it's kind of ironic that we're headed into January. And of course, in January, everybody's very motivated. They have a lot of new goals they've set for themselves. And that's a good thing. But then what happens in March? 
Maybe they only make it to March, maybe in February. A lot of times that motivation, it starts to go down. And when that happens, you either quit and you don't hit your goal or discipline kicks in. So discipline becomes very important. Now, it's easy for me to sit here and tell you to be disciplined, but the reality is, is it's a lot harder than that. So there's some things that you can do, in my opinion, that are going to help you uh, maintain your discipline. So I want you to kind of to like take a psychological profile of yourself. If you have junk food around the house, um, are you disciplined enough to avoid it when the times get tough? Now, your answer may be yes, but it might be no. You, maybe that certain food that you like, maybe it's not a good idea for you to have bags and bags of it in the house. Um, because maybe you can't get rid of it. You know, it's a little harder. Like I'm in a situation where I have kids and sometimes we have different uh, things that my kids like, um, but I can avoid those. That's okay. But so psychologically, how much, you know, can you handle it? And then, um, I, I, you know, a lot of people kind of like keep the, keep what they're doing to themselves. And I always tell people, let your friends know, let your family know and ask them, to keep you accountable. So this kind of ties into number one with, with um, having a clear way to measure goals. But this is a little more easy. I want you to talk to your family, your friends, and tell them, hey, I have a goal. Can you help keep me on track? Because what happens is a lot of times your family and friends may not even know you have a goal, and then they may say, hey, let's go get you know, potato chips and beer. Whereas maybe they would have said, hey, I know you're sticking to your plan. You know, maybe they would alter what they wanted to do to support you. You don't know unless you, unless you ask. And what I found is, is that your good friends will always want to support you in your goals. So enlist your friends. Make sure they help you stick to your goals. And um, again, you know, I always tell people like that psychological profile, like what can you handle? If you can't handle a whole lot of temptation, get stuff out of your house and uh, go from there. So that's number two. Okay, number three is use the 90-10 rule. This means that 90% of your food is going to be good and 10% is going to be a little bit of fun food. Now, you know, we talked about having measurable goals. We talked about being disciplined. Um, but in some cases, uh, I believe that all allotting that 10% of fun food is a really good idea for most people. And I do this myself. So let's see, let's see, I'm gonna just throw random numbers out, but let's say you eat five times a day. So that means every two days, you're gonna have one meal that you enjoy. So five meals a day, and I say 10% of your meals should be a fun meal. That doesn't mean you go to the buffet and you eat until you're sick and you have to unbuckle your pants. It just means that if there's something that you kind of crave or you like, or you enjoy, um, hey, I like grilled cheese sandwiches, so I might have a grilled cheese sandwich as one of my meals. Um, go ahead and do it. You know, I've, it's funny how your mind works because for those of you that have dieted really hard, what happens when you go into a grocery store? You see foods that normally wouldn't even bother you, but now all of a sudden you're like, oh my God, that looks so good. I want to try that. And then when your diet's over, like if you compete and you, you're kind of loosening it up a little bit, then you don't want it anymore. So it's funny how your mind works. Your mind is like, whatever you can't have, you want it. And it's just, it's a real interesting psychological dilemma you have. So there's a way to get around that. It's that 90-10 rule. So, you know, when I was dieting for contests, for example, I would take a Friday night and one meal and my wife and I would go to Five Guys Burgers and Fries. We'd have French fries and a cheeseburger. So I didn't really go 12 weeks without eating a hamburger. When, when the show was over, a lot of the other guys were saying, I can't wait to go get a hamburger. And I was like, well, I had one last Friday, so it's really not a big deal. So if you kind of allow yourself a little fun time, you won't have those crazy out of control cravings. And listen, it's really hard to go four weeks, eight weeks, 12 weeks, 16 weeks and eat no fun food. It's really hard. That's just reality. And you can talk about discipline all you want. And as, as to my point, number two, discipline, you need it. But the leaner you get and the longer you do this, the harder it becomes to stick with it just because psychologically what's going on. And again, that 90-10 rule allows it to, it allows you to have a little bit of fun every now and then. Maybe you have some donuts Sunday mornings or whatever, but it gives you something to look forward to. There's multiple benefits of that too. 
Um, I talked about your family and friends being supportive. Well, this is a way you can go out and do some things with your family and friends. Maybe that meal um, is something you do with your family and you have a little fun and loosen things up. So you're, you're reinforcing your friendships, your, your family, your relationships there. You're not kind of um, alienating everybody. You're, you know, you're still doing things together, which I think is a very good thing. And the other thing is, is when you eat like that, it can become much more of a lifestyle. And you'll hear people talk a lot about lifestyle and how you can't really look at it as a diet. It's got to be a way that you eat. Uh, that sounds great in theory. That's fantastic. And that's great when you can do that. But for many of us, it's not that easy. It's not that easy. I don't, I don't wake up wanting to eat chicken and rice every day. And, you know, I, I just don't. Um, I like to have a little fun food. So it can become a little bit more of a bearable lifestyle. And you can enjoy it, actually. You look forward to some fun meals. And then I think the other meals aren't as bad. And then they don't seem as bland. And, of course, you can spice food and, and you know, and do, kind of do things to make it taste good. But you don't feel deprived, I think, is probably the best way to put it. So 90% of your food is what we would call clean food, um, non-processed food. And 10% uh, will be fun food, whether it's some donuts, a couple slices of pizza or whatever. Um, it's, it's, it's giving you some mental relaxation, you know, so you don't have that stress building up week after week, and those cravings building up. And then all of a sudden the dam breaks and you go crazy and you start, start eating and you can't stop eating. So anyways, those are, th those, again, those are three tips that I think will help you. Um, make sure you have a very clear goal. Make sure you have ways to keep yourself in check and to monitor your progress as you go. It can't just be a goal out there in left field that you don't really know if you're progressing toward or not. Make sure you're disciplined, um, which might entail enlisting your friends, your family to help kind of push you along the way and keep you on the right path. Um, that's okay. Motivation is great, but motivation fades a lot of times, and that's when discipline has to come in. And, and there is no way around not having discipline. That's a part of this. You have to have it or you're going to fail. And then the third thing, again, is use that 90-10 rule. Have the, you know, st structure in some fun food here and there. Do it with your family, your friends. It'll be much more bearable, and you'll feel, I think you'll just be happier in general. And when you're happy doing things, your chances of sticking with them are much higher, in my opinion. So hopefully those three things help. Um, if there's some things that you've done that you feel really help you, then feel free to comment below. Somebody else might catch that. And it might help them, be a benefit to them. I appreciate everyone's support. Thank you, and we'll see you next time.